for an hour here. So um, let's just go through these slides. And if you have any questions at the end, um, I can answer questions then. Um, but go ahead and just wait. There's also a chat box. You can put those in if you don't want to um, say at the end. Um, Darren will be on for a little bit. Um, is anything important but that I can go through them at the end too. So those are your two options. Um, today, we're just going to go over what to expect about the season, kind of what your role entails. I know a lot of you guys have done this before. I've heard this meeting before, um, but uh, it might be a bit of a refresher, maybe a little bit of new information. But if you haven't coached before, um, it'll be a good kind of general overview of what to expect. Um, we'll go over kind of battle on soccer, key contacts, um, your resources, kind of our policies, what communicating with your teams would be like, and then the format of our program. Um, here is kind of an overview of kind of the development and the framework of what Lawn Soccer looks like. We find ourselves in foundation one, uh, the very basic, the very beginning. Um, and what that means to me is just kind of, it, it, it means that what we're working on isn't necessarily the, the most advanced things, but just kind of um, getting a starting point for uh, where our kids are going to be um, kind of creating the building blocks for a love of the game so they keep playing um, and then getting them comfortable with the soccer ball, getting the control of different movements so that um, more can come later. Um, for you guys, that might look like is just your session plans, but uh, we give you is going to be um, less structured, uh, kind of rigid um, thought processes and kind of uh, activities and more kind of we're making it fun. We're going to make it interactive um, and get lots of repetition touch on the ball and kind of introduce concepts to them so they can grow on them later. Um, hold on, I got to fix this guy. I can't see. There we go. Um, here are kind of what we offer for lawn soccer. Obviously, we have our fall and spring seasons, but you might get questions from your parents about different things that we offer besides that. And so kind of our supplemental programs are, uh, we have our Monday morning programs, which is good if you know you can't make Saturdays um that's offered Monday mornings for two to three is the Miami program and four to five for weekday mini so if maybe some of your team has a younger sibling like maybe younger than our micros three program um you can let them know we have that uh what you guys are probably going to want to know more so um since your players are already in this program is our rec TA program <laughs> sometimes uh parents are looking for someone more experienced. I know some of you got rubbed into this and don't know what you're doing, have never coached before, um, and that's okay. That's what we you know, kind of understand. Um, but if they are looking for something more structured, uh, we have our RECTA program, which is our technical academy program, and it's led by our travel coaches, our paid, our paid trainers. Um, and so that's a good option to give them if they are looking for something a little more advanced. Um, we also have summer camps offered that the whole summer um, that they can sign up for, US can sign up for. Um, our winter clinics, winter clinics are similar to um, Rec TA, also run by um, paid trainers. And so a little more advanced, a little more um, you know, coaches that have an understanding of what they're doing. And um, that's a good thing to offer people who are looking for something like that. Um, and then we have holiday camps and free play days. Free play days are just a day. Uh, you can come out, it's like scrimmages. Um, we like to get a whole lot of people there and it's very fun. Um, but we send out emails updates of when those are. So that's just a general idea, some things that uh, we offer if you get questions from your coaches about things like that. Um, something that you guys will want to have access to and make a note of, so make sure you're paying attention. Um, a lot of you have expressed a concern that you don't know what you're doing when it comes to coaching, you've never done it before. Um, and I have promised you that we will help you and give you resources. And here is where that is. Um, it's on our Latin Soccer website. Last time I clicked on this link, it messed everything up. So I'm not going to click on it. I'm not going to take you there. But this slide will be posted along with the recording of the video onto the website. Um, so you'll be able to access it. You can click on that link and it'll take you to our Coaches Info Center where it has sessions for you. So you can go there for um, your practice sessions um, throughout the week. And you can go to week one practice session. And you can look at it before your practice, kind of get familiar with it. And they'll tell you everything you need to know from activity one to the last activity, um, how to set it up, what the coaching points are, what the focus is. It'll be very, very helpful for you. Um, so just kind of know where that coach's info center is. You go to the website, go to the rec tab, um, that you'll be able to find it there. And if you um, don't want to use our uh, session plans, that's fine too. 
but we offer um, other resources. There's articles, there's uh, different videos you can watch um, that give you just a little bit more extra training if you're looking for that. So that's something you might want to explore a little bit on your own time just to kind of become familiar with what we have there in case it suits your fancy. Um, here are some dates that are important and they're coming up this weekend, um, even before this weekend. So Thursday is gonna be a Zoom meeting with a special topic. Um, I believe it's gonna be on communication, how to communicate with your teams through the app that we provide, um, just kind of giving you some instruction on how that works, what it looks like. Um, that video will also be posted if you can't make it Thursday at 715, but that's going to be something that you're going to want to um, make sure to watch just so you don't have any questions on, you know, how to get in contact with your families when the time comes. Um, this Saturday is a very important date to know. It's going to be um, our equipment pickup day and you'll be able to um, have a field session so you can see kind of the way a session's run. Um, for you guys, you're going to have your session first and then equipment pickup. It's going to be 10 and 11. So you're going to want to be at Long Soccer Park at 10 a.m. And then you'll be on the field for an hour and then you can walk over to the commuter lot uh, where we have everything set up and you can get your equipment um, and that will have everything you need. You cannot make it on Saturday. Um, you can come on Sunday. We'll have like kind of an additional day um, to kind of catch everybody who couldn't make it Saturday, kind of check all our boxes. That'll be between uh, 9 and 11 a.m. Um, and that'll be in the commuter lot also. So just Make sure you come on one of those days. If you're out of town or you can't make it those days for some reason, um, let me know. We will have the equipment. You can come pick it up after this weekend. Um, you'll have to come to the lawn soccer office to get it, um, but we can arrange that. So you will be able to get your equipment somehow, some way. Do not worry. Um, we're going over some general reminders about rosters, officials, equipment, all the things um, for your rosters. Those are going to be posted on Friday. Um, so then look out for that. Once it's posted, you'll be able to see it in your account. Um, if you go to your lounge soccer login, you log in under your account, you'll be able to see your roster posted. Um, just a note, you know, after you look at that, once the season gets started, um, only people that are on your official roster. So only players you can see on your team page should be coming out to your practices. So if somebody requested you and you weren't able to get them on your team because your team's full, because you're so popular and well-loved, um, that's awesome, um, but don't allow them just to come out and uh, be with your team. You can point them in my direction and I can kind of work with them that way, um, but we wanna make sure we know everybody is and are have everyone accounted for. Um, and kind of along the same lines, if you have people reach out to you, be like, oh man, like we forgot to request you, but we really want to be on your team. Don't promise them anything. Uh, we um, obviously will do our best to make it happen. Even after rosters are posted, we'll see what we can do. Uh, we have less flexibility after rosters are posted, but we will still try. Um, but we never want to promise people anything because, you know, sometimes we just really can't make it happen. So always point people back to me, send them my email, let them know they can get in contact with me and I'll work with them. Just don't um, get anybody's hopes up because sometimes our hands are just tied that way. Um, team officials, so coaches, assistant coaches, we would love for all of you to have an assistant coach if you um, don't have one assigned. When the rosters are posted, that's okay. Um, a good kind of thing that you can do that's usually effective is after your first practice, you can kind of get your team parents together and let them know you're looking for additional help, looking for an assistant that can help you out. Most of the time, parents are very open to that because they don't have to have the pressure of being an official head coach, and that's really stressful. Um, so usually, once the head coach overall is assigned, they're very open to um, stepping into an assistant role. So um, keep that in mind, and we would love to do that for you. Just make sure that if you do have someone volunteer for that, that they go on and register as an assistant coach. Um, you can't have somebody on the field as an assistant that's not um, official in our system. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, if you do have someone volunteer, you can have them register and then shoot me an email letting me know that that's done, and then I can add them to your team. That's kind of the process we want to go through. We don't want to have people out there that we don't know are out there that are unaccounted for, uh, just so we can you know, provide a safe environment for everybody. Um, required equipment, um, jerseys, you should have ordered them already. Um, if not, I would instruct your teams to order them ASAP so that they can get them as soon as possible. Um, Capelli sometimes has a long wait period. Um, sometimes it's very short, sometimes it's long. So we just wanna kind of make sure we get the on the early end in case, worst case scenario. 
Um, you also want a ball at this level at the size three. So if anyone asks you what size ball they have, they should get the three. Um, shin guards are mandatory um, and they go on the inside of your socks. If you have anybody show up with their shin guards on the outside of their socks, um, just let them know it goes on the inside so they don't look silly. Um, make sure people are bringing water, appropriate shoes. We're not gonna kick anybody off the field at this level for not wearing cleats, but uh, maybe they don't know that that's what they have. So just make it a point to say, hey, like, you know, usually we have, we wear cleats uh, when we're playing soccer um, in case they want to go buy some um, required equipment. Um, just make sure for, the more important thing about cleats is that they're soccer cleats. Um, we don't want to wear baseball or football shoes because they have a, a stud at the front and that can be dangerous. Make sure it's the right um, type of shoe. Um, no jewelry, especially for games. Referees are probably going to be um, making sure you remove those. So just maybe make an announcement to your team. And then if anyone has a cast, they can play. Just make sure it's wrapped in bubble wrap or something. So um, don't shun anybody for having a broken arm. Just make sure it's safe and follow this protocol that way. Um, the referee will probably want to check it before the game, but you know, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, as far as equipment goes, this is going to be something you're going to want to tell your parents about um, in case they do need to buy something from April 7th to the 11th. It's going to be our Dick's Sporting Goods um, dates where you can get a discount. Um, so if you need a ball, you need a you know, shin guard, you need cleats, whatever it is, um, you might want to go during those dates because you'll get a pretty good discount. Um, you can get it for cheaper than, than not. Um, let's see, uniforms, we kind of went over this, they can order it online. They're gonna need a red and white jersey, black shorts and black socks. Um, so pretty simple, um, pretty straightforward. Uh, we're gonna go over some safety reminders, um, heading concussion, slide tackling, all, you know, the fun, exciting things. Um, there's no heading permitted at this level, um, not until fifth grade. Um, so just make sure your kids are not doing that. Um, if they do, then just remind them that it's not allowed. You don't have to you know, berate them or anything. Just remind them that we're not going to do that um, at this level, um, especially because concussions are more uh, prominent at the younger levels before their heads are fully developed. Um, in the case of a concussion, um, don't let that player keep playing if they're ha having some serious issues after hitting their head. Um, I think kind of the procedure is to remote, move them from the field, make sure they're doing okay. If they have a headache or showing any symptoms of concussion, get their um, family involved. They aren't already in the know. Maybe they're not paying attention. Let the parents know what's going on, um, and then just let me know. Uh, don't don't put them back in the game. Um, maybe have them sit out for the rest of the game. Parents stay with the doctor if they're not feeling better the next day. Uh, but if it's something serious, um, just keep me in the know. So send me an email so that I am not blindsided when someone's like, "My son got a concussion, and you didn't do anything." You know, we want to kind of avoid that. Okay. Um, same kind of thing for slide tackling. There's no slide tackling. Um, I don't foresee it super being an issue. Most of the time people just fall on the floor and maybe that gets called a slide tackling. Um, but I think the more major issue with slide tackling is that person can be on the ground and then get stepped on and then get injured. So I think that's kind of the reasoning behind it. But um, there is just not. So if someone does it kind of same thing as heading, just mind them, we're not gonna do that, stay on your feet. We don't want anyone on the ground in general or falling on the ground or sitting on the ground um, during a game. So just kind of keep players on their feet, keep them moving. Um, if um, a header does happen, if it's unintentional, it's an indirect free kick, which means you can't score directly off the kick. So someone has to touch it before it goes in the goal. I'm sorry, that's intentional. If someone heads it intentionally, that's an indirect free kick. If it's unintentional, it's going to be a drop ball. Um, to the opposing team. So say I'm on the red team, I unintentionally had the ball, referee's gonna give a drop ball to the other team and they can play. Uh, weather and fields alert. So this is the same as every other season. So if you're returning, nothing's changed. Um, if anything happens prior to the day of or prior to your session starting, say a field's closed or it's raining and for weather we're canceling, you'll receive an email from me. Um, and then I will just re rely on you guys to communicate that to your team. So say Saturday is coming up, you have a game Friday night, it's raining, it's pouring, and then Parks and Rec closes all the fields. So no games on Saturday. Um, I will get notified by Parks and Rec, and then me or Darren will email you and let you know, 
and then we'll just rely on you guys to let your team know that Saturday games are canceled. Um, we will do our best to make that up. Um, sometimes we'll try and do that during the week, um, maybe during your practice time, but we have allotted one weekend at the end of the season for a makeup game. Um, so if we have to use that, we will, but sometimes we'll just put it in the week to save that because there's been seasons in the past where there's been multiple rain out dates. Um, so you kind of want to make sure we're not putting the season out too much into the summer. Um, anything that's called during your session. So it's not prior, it's not before you started, but say you're playing your game and then lightning hits, that call is gonna be made by the referee. Um, if it's during a game, if it's during your practice, it'll be made by you. If you see lightning, it's a 30 minute delay um, in your car. So don't hang out in the building, don't hang out outside off the field. Um, everyone, everyone needs to go to the car and that will be kind of on you to communicate to your families if you see lightning. All right, everyone go to your car. I'll let you know in 30 minutes if we're, you know, playing or not. But for Saturdays, that will be called by the referee. So don't, you know, don't need to worry about that. Um, a team communication. So kind of like I already said, you're kind of be the middleman for us to your team and from your team to us. So after rosters are posted, um, your team will go to you as kind of the first line of contact. If you can't answer their question or don't know the answer, you can either direct them to us or you can ask me um, and then you can relay that information back to them. Um, you might wanna send out weekly emails, reminder emails of what's coming up, what to bring, et cetera. Parents usually need a lot of information, a lot of reminders. Um, so just, if you have the time, if you can do that, that'd be awesome. You will want to send out one email, kind of the mandatory one is when you get your rosters, it'll be kind of a pre season email, an intro email to introduce yourself and to give them all the information that they need to know. Um, but yeah, and that can be the Game Changer app, which I think we have a slide, yep, next. Um, the Game Changer app is how you can communicate to your teams more effectively. You can do it through your Sports Connect, through your um, Loud Soccer account, um, but this app syncs to your Loud Soccer account. Um, so you should be able to access your roster, your contacts, your emails, um, your schedule, everything through the app. Um, it's very similar to Team Snap if you have a kid who's in travel, um, but it makes things a lot easier. And then there are instructions on here that I'm also not going to click in case anything messes up this time again. But again, this will be posted. Um, the instructions in this link is probably going to be more helpful than me because I've never had to use the app. And a lot of times I have to kind of field your questions and then attempt to do it and then come with an answer. So my advice would be to go to the slideshow if you have a question, click on this, go through the instructions, the troubleshooting. If you are still confused or that doesn't have an answer you need, um, then reach out to me and we can figure it out. But yeah, that might be probably gonna be more helpful <laughs> than me. Um, here are some important dates. Remember Thursday is a special topic. You're gonna want to either be there or make sure to look up the video at a later time because that's gonna be super helpful um, just navigating how to communicate and navigating the apps. Um, rosters are gonna be released Friday. Um, practice, practice schedules will follow that on the 25th, 26th. We will get the game schedules released to you April 5th. Um, if anything horrible has happened to your schedule, um, like if you're a dual coach, for instance, dual coaches, we deconflict your schedule. But if for some reason you have a game that's at the same time, don't worry, just let me know. Let me know very much far in advance as soon as you know, um, and we can fix that for you. Um, for the most part, if there is something that is a problem and you can't make a game, we can reschedule it, um, you know, nine times out of 10 as long as let me know way in advance because the later you let me know, the, the more of an issue it is because you have to kind of talk to the team you're playing, talk to the team we're switching you with. There's just a whole lot of communication. Uh, so you just want to make sure we get to do those um, in advance, give everybody in advance notice. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's not a problem. Just let me know as soon as you know. Um, Memorial Day, so May 27th, there's not going to be any games or practices. That'll be a free day. And then June 3rd is going to be the Jamboree. That's our big event at Lawn Soccer Park. All the games will be at LSP. There'll be, you know, vendors and activities in the parking lot. It's a whole lot of fun. Um, and that's where you will get your team medals. Um, so we will have award, participation awards for you to give out to your team. And that is when you will pick them up and hand them out. Kind of what I just talked about. Um, June 3rd, Alliance Soccer Park on the turf. 
Um, you'll be playing other towns. So it'll be kind of more fun. You'll be teams you haven't played before. You'll get your medals and be able to celebrate the season together, which will be a lot of fun. People always love the Jamboree. Um, practices. So listen carefully because we've had problems in the past. Um, and this is important information to know. Um, you, each team is allotted half of a field, which means on each micros field, there'll be two teams. So if somebody else is on your field, it's because they're probably also scheduled there. Um, you also get one of the goals, right? Each field has one goal at each end, right? Two goals per field. Whatever goals on your half is your goal. Um, if there is a goal laying around, not on a field, not on it, not assigned, it's probably just been moved, especially at our like elementary um, or middle schools um, during recess. If the kids go out there and they move them around, they're probably not going to be on the field. Um, those aren't extra. They're just not in the right place. So um, please don't go around just collecting goals. Don't <laughs> please don't show up 30 minutes early thinking you can just get all the goals because um, then there's going to be a lot of coaches upset not, and have nothing. So. Um, just know you get one goal and one half for your practice. Um, you guys are going to leave these. Um, remember, the session plans are online. You can follow the link to the Coaches Info Center like we talked about before. Um, and then just make sure to end five minutes early. You can do your team chat. Um, it's usually good to end your practice with a little chat, a little huddle. Just clean up your field, do that to the sides. So the next team can get on and get set up. Just be you know cordial with everybody. Saturday schedules are going to be published when they are published. Uh, the date we talked about before, I think it was April 5th. Um, you'll be able to see them in your team page. So when you go into your account, you'll be able to see everything that you need there. So your rosters, your schedule, et cetera. Um, please do not check your schedule once, uh, right when they're posted and never check it again, um, because it is possible for some changes. Like I said, if there's a dual coach out there who has a conflict, we have to deconflict them. They can't be two places at once, especially if there's no assistant. So that may mean that your time gets swapped a little bit. Um, you'll receive an email if that ever happens. I won't just switch it and not tell you. But sometimes, as we know, those emails go to your spam folder. So just make sure to check um, check that regularly, maybe on a weekly basis. That would be ideal, um, just in case anything has changed. Um, yeah, and then field closures, if anything is closed, we'll let you know. That will be communicated to you um all the good stuff that we've talked about yeah so if your head coach um and your schedule isn't deconflicted just let me know again like i said far in advance all that good stuff uh, we can help you we can fix it we just need time to do so um reschedules due to weather are, are done by me and like i said we'll have one date at the end of the season. We're not going to go way into the summer with all these dates. Um, so we'll either use that one or we'll schedule it during the week during your practice. We'll work with you, whatever works. Um, and then ability to reschedule for other reasons is very difficult, especially after the schedule is posted, just because of limited field availability, limiting, limited um, times. We have to work with uh, dual coaches. So sometimes there's already someone scheduled there, et cetera. There's a lot of factors. Just keep in mind that, you know, there are so many people in this club, so many people in the program that sometimes, you know, there's just a lot going on. Um, let me know if you have a conflict. Um, there's kind of a procedure I'll tell you to do. First, if you have an assistant coach, they can cover it. Um, if they're also out of town, <laughs> then you can notify me. Um, and we can try and reschedule. Um, do not just talk to the other coach and be like, let's just show up at this place at this time and we can reference ourselves. Don't do that. Um, that will not work out well. Um, we'll work with you. We'll figure it out. Uh, we can ask someone on your team to step in um, and they can cover it for that game. There's a lot of options we have, um, but just let me know. Keep me in the loop, bottom line. Um, game day, and we're going to go over what that looks like, what to bring, what to know. Um, this is what you're going to get in your equipment bag. You're going to get a first aid kit. You're going to get a ball. You're going to get cones. You're going to get jerseys for scrimmage vests. And then you're going to get um, a little bit of extra equipment. So you should have everything that you need. Um, Pre-game things to know prior to the game. Home wears red. Away wears white. I get questions like this all the time. Home is red. Away is white. Um, arrival time. We suggest you show up early. Uh, 20 minutes before kickoff, you kind of want to be there before your team gets there just to help them figure out where to go, what to do. And then 
uh, we recommend that players get there 15 minutes before. Maybe you can do a little warm up, you know, get ready for the game, get together, make sure everyone's accounted for, especially um, we find that people uh, are often not on time. So if you give them a 15 minute barrier, they're most likely going to be before the game, <laughs> which is ideal. Um, wait for the previous team to depart before going to the field. Don't just kind of intrude on them. Uh, warm ups, avoid using the goal area. So you want to kind of keep the field as clean as as in good condition as possible. So try and not do it in the kind of goal, the goal arc um, to preserve the field. And then referees and opposing coaches, um, just set a positive tone. We don't want to be a bad example on character and how to act and how to treat people for um, these rec one kids, these first second graders. Just make sure we treat everybody with respect. Not everyone's gonna get it right all the time. Not everyone's gonna be perfect. People are gonna make mistakes. Just make sure that, uh, we are having grace and, um, you know, acknowledging that, you know, we're not perfect ourselves. If there's a major issue, like a ref is really bad, does something horrible, the other coach is, you know, doing bad things and <laughs> let me know, I'll handle it. But um, usually it's more effective to go through me than to start, you know, a scene on the field. Same slide. Um, team inspector errors. This is kind of just a, um, a picture of what the field looks like and who should be where. Um, team A, this is for coaches and players over here. Um, I'm not sure you can see my cursor, but team A is over here. Um, and then across from team A is where the team A fans see, sit. Um, they sit right across on the other side. So teams and players should not be on the same side. Um, then team B is on the other half of the field, but there are uh, fancy spectators over here. This is called the goal arc in front of each goal. And then the middle circle is called the center circle. That's where the kickoff takes place, if you are not aware. Um, yeah, so coaches to remain in the techni technical area. Um, that's between the center circle and the goal arc. Don't be over by the goal on the goal line. Um, kind of stay in that area, um, stay on your half. Don't go all up in the other coach's business. Um, and then do not step onto the field during the play. So you shouldn't be kind of on the field coaching live and in action. And you know, stay on the sideline, coach from there, um, and keep it peaceful, please. Um, here are FIFA laws of the game, just so everyone knows. Um, FIFA's law of the game governs soccer at the highest level. So FIFA is kind of like the overarching. Um, thing for soccer. Um, if anything changes, if there's any info, anything you need to know, that can also be found in the Coaches Info Center. So if you're looking for uh, a specific rule, specific things to know, maybe you're new and haven't done this before, um, that's something that you can also find in the Coaches Info Center on our website. If you want to um, just refresh your mind or if you've done it before and need a refresher, it can be found there. Um, Playing format, this is 4v4, um, which means four players from your team, four players from the other team um, are on the field at a time. And that's why we kind of have a hard cutoff at eight players on the field. Um, that way it makes subbing very easy. You should have four players playing for the first quarter and then the next four can go in for the second quarter. And then there'll be a halftime, one to two minutes, um, sorry, one to five minutes in between those two quarters at halftime. And in between each quarter, there'll be a one to two minute break. Um, so each four groups or each group of four should play two times in two quarters, if that makes sense. Um, it just makes things very simple for you. You don't have to worry about subbing on the go, making sure people get extra playing time or even playing time. It's all structured. Um, a minimum of 50% play time per game. So no one should play three quarters if somebody is not playing two, if that makes sense. Um, meaning there should be someone playing three quarters if there's somebody only playing one, right? Make sure everyone plays two quarters if you're short players. And so you need to play people more than two, that's fine. Um, but just make sure everyone's getting the equal amount of playing time, especially at this level. Um, and then again, if something is made during the quarter breaks um, or for injury, you can also do that. Don't force a player to play if they are injured. You can settle one for one and that's fine. Well, um, This slide, um, 
it kind of just explains what I just said. Um, player positions, um, make sure players are playing through each position um, and not just playing striker. You kind of play in the diamonds, make sure they play everywhere. Um, restarts are kick-ins, not throw-ins. Um, you can't score off of a kick-in. Um, and you can play in any direction. So it doesn't have to go forward, it doesn't have to go um, backwards on the kickoff. That's fine. Oops, where'd I go? Uh, I lost my place. I'm so sorry. Oops. Okay. Um, uh, referees are independent from loud and soccer. So um, we don't control them. And so if there is an issue, let me know. Um, but just know that we don't schedule them. And so we don't really have um, too much say of what happens. So just be aware of that. Um, and know that there is a shortage right now. And so if you don't have a referee, just referee it yourself. Um, and then we can work to get you one next time, try and we can coordinate with them and, and let them know you didn't have one. Um, but um, just kind of be you know, aware of that and that it is possible that you won't have one um, for a game here and there. We kind of talked about that. Uh, make sure that, you know, remember you're modeling positive behavior um, saying good game after the game. Thank you to the referee. Uh, we want to make sure this is a positive experience for everybody. Um, and so just, you know, make it positive, be a good role model, clean up the benches area, um, and make sure there's snacks. because that's probably the most important part. Um, and then resources. Um, I'm probably your first line of contact. If you have any issues or questions, please let me know. Email me, call me. I'm here to help you. I'm here to support you. Um, the Coaches Info Center has a lot of information, a lot of um, resources for you. Um, so that's a good place to go. I might even direct you there most of the time. And then if you need to contact somebody else, you can also contact Darren um, and his email is linked here. And again, this slide will be posted on the website. Um, and then besides that, just good luck. Um, hopefully this is a good season for you and um, it's a positive experience. Uh, we know that not everybody has done this before and not everybody has, you know, an uh, understanding of what's going on. And so just know that, you know, you have support, you have help, and we are here for that. So yeah, and if you have any questions, we have a little bit of time left, but um, you can also just email me if it pertains to your team specifically. That might be a better, more effective way um, for you to get an answer. Um, and that way we don't keep everybody on here super long tonight. Um, let me make sure, I do see the chat was here, but I know Darren was answering some questions. Perfect. Um, any questions? Hey, yeah. how you doing, Franzi? How's it going? Hi. How's it going? Good to see you guys. Good. Hey, Darren. Um, can you slide up? Can you go up to slide 31 or 32 a second on some of the fields? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, some fields, like if they're adjacent to one another, there's you know, like kind of like in the middle spot where it's a lot narrower than on the opposite side. Um, so for coaches, um, last year, sometimes if we had a whole like group of fans over, you know, on the narrow side, um, not so much space to put two fans on both fields, you know, like opposite one another. Um, if coaches can just pay attention um, and maybe have the coaches from the two different teams there. So there's only like one person instead of a slew of fans in a very narrow area. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, use your judgment too. Um, if that's the case, you know, just make sure everything is, you know, good. Um, but yeah, trust your judgment. I had a question as well. Yes. Um, so I was wondering, um, if I'm not able to come to the equipment pickup this weekend, is it possible that I'm able to come earlier in the week or possibly on Monday? Yeah, come. Yeah, you can. So you can come anytime after this weekend to pick it up um, at the office. I wouldn't come before just because you need to get everything ready. But yeah, and you can just email me and figure out a time for uh, me to meet you there. Um, and we should be able to get you set for that. Perfect. Thank you. All right, question on uh, selecting players from previous season is that possible or how does that go how do we go about doing that 
Yeah, so they can, I mean, they can put in the registration request to be on a certain coach's team. Um, a lot of people do do that at this. It's a lot easier to do it before rosters are posted. So if you contact me, I can kind of make sure that everyone is in the right place before we post that on Friday. But um, we put, we oh. add people by registration order. So we do keep that in mind as well. Okay, um, so we just, e we just email you the players that want to be on yeah, the team. Email, so. email me and, I'll, and I will, uh, we can talk offline about that and see if it's possible to get that done. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me let me just elaborate on that a little bit. We we do not take requests from coaches for a team. So if a player has requested to be with you, they that's fine. But but we we do not take requests from coaches um, in Rec One. Got it. Um, what what day does uh, everything start? Like as far as um, like what's the first week? The first week is sat so the first Saturday session is the fifteenth of April, and then practices will start the, the week leading up to that. Okay. Anything else? If not, um, I can let you guys go, and you can email me later on with any questions you think of later. I, I have a quick question. Um, yeah. Uh, so this is my first season um, coaching with um, my. Anyways, but. Um, in regards to practice, um, I do I do I have to attend pra practice each um, each week or? Yeah, so you'll run the practices during the week, um, right. whatever practice time or day you requested, um, and then Saturday. Yeah, so you should be at practice. If there is a date that you're missing, uh, we can just let me know. We can maybe work around that. Maybe we can schedule your price on a different day that week or have a parent fill in. We can talk through that. But um, in general, okay. yeah. So the coach and the and the um, team, the whole team will be practicing together, correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, if I can attend, um, the assistant can. Can one yes. of us? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Okay. That's it. Thanks. I have one question. Um, so how do we know um, if we would have an assistant or not? Uh, when your roster is posted, you'll be able to see if you have an assistant. Um, if you don't, then that's probably because no one on your team registered as an assistant. Um, and then, like I said, you can talk to them after your first practice and see if anybody's willing to step up, and then we can go, get them registered later, um, later on. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I did have one more question. Um, yes. Last season – there was a point in the season where all the coaches were notified about like uh, maybe sending a player up to a different difficulty if they're mm -hmm. excelling. Um, I just want to know if we do, if the, is that going to happen again? And if it does, do you lose that player from your team if they move up? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll answer that. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Terry. You're too late. So the, the U8 Academy is maxed out. We're not taking any more players. So, uh, if you have a superstar, tell them to uh, sign up for travel tryouts in uh, in May. Awesome. Thank you. So um, one more question for me. Um, in regards to if the weather is bad and I need to notify the players, would you provide me with the contacts? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so if, if we're canceling practice or fields are closed, um, we will let you know. Otherwise, you should go on as scheduled. Okay. How would I be notifying? We'll the, email um, you. Team? We'll, we'll email you, and then you will be able to contact your team through your account, Alone Soccer, or through the Game Changer app, like we talked about. And then, okay. And, yeah. And then Thursday okay. would be a good, good time to go to that meeting because we'll kind of talk more about that. Okay. Just a, a point of clarification. Right. You had said the the first games are. Uh, Saturday the 15th of April the the prior week the week of uh, April 2nd will be the first practice is that correct well, I'll call you about that. um no the week leading up to your first Saturday so okay so the, the, the week 10th. the week of April okay so Monday the yeah. 10th so sometime that week okay thank you yep yeah one question uh I signed up for a head coach how do I know mm -hmm. if I have a system or not is there a way to find out if I have an assistant? Yeah, you'll, you will know when rosters are posted. Um, oh, okay. You'll be able to see if you have an assistant. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. 
Just a question about um, first aid and injuries and such. You mentioned that if somebody obviously exhibits concussion symptoms, you know, they mm -hmm. sit out. Um, have you guys had like instances of, you know, a kid breaks a leg or something like that? Like, is there a specific loud and soccer protocol for that other than check call care kind of thing? Um, definitely let me know that it happens. Um, but I would just, you know, uh, maybe notify the, I think we, not, I mean, we went kind of through the procedure for concussions. I think that it would be the same one Let the parents know if it's, you know, in, if it's in serious enough that you need attention there, I mean, get an ambulance call, you know, the right people. Um, but always let me know, like always keep me in the loop on things like that. If anything serious happens. Okay. Is there, is anybody like on um, loud soccer there, they, you know, first aid trained or is that sort of an expectation? We of? won't, yeah, we won't have athletic trainers at every location um, okay. or any location, actually. <laughs> um, but I don't think we've had that scenario yet. So fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. Not gonna work. I didn't just jinx us, but all right. Anyone else? Again, you can always email me later on if you need to. Um, awesome. Well, I'll let you guys go then. Thank you guys again for coming and joining on Monday. Um, if you guys need anything at the season, let me know. Remember, I'm here to support you. I'm here to help you. Um, so never hesitate to reach out. Um, thanks. Um, have a great rest of your night. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, dude.